Thank you very much, professional psychologist Alejandro Ibarra, for joining with to talk a little bit more about OCD to continue the conversation we had last week about uh, how OCD is impacting everyday life. Today we're going to specialize in this the Ibarra exchange. We're going to focus and specialize on Soloft and antidepressants, how they have worked or not in OCD, and also we're going to talk touch a little bit about the reality of cognitive behavioral therapy, especially one that you do the ERP. Uh, thank you very much for joining me again. I appreciate it. Thank you, Luigi, for having me. And to me, it's a, a pleasure to be here with you and with all the OCD community that uh, is uh, watching this video. And, and to me, it's a a big opportunity to, to talk with you about OCD and about medication in this moment. Last week we found out that what you do, now when I actually understand even, even more about the specifics of, of what you do. You're a licensed trained psychologist in OCD. You do cognitive behavioral therapy. Now, you have a patient, they come, he or she, has just seen a psychiatrist taking a medication that may or may not work, have seen a previous psychologist, okay, that didn't really know much about OCD, you're the expert, okay? What is the first technique you use and how do you help them? Yes, the, the first technique we use in CBT, in Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, uh, the name is ERP, Exposure with Response Prevention. ERP is the gold, ERP. Treat, gold standard treatment standard treatment to, to treat the OCD symptoms in all the world. So ERP basically consists in face your fear. Exposure is face your fear or face your, your obsessions, your thoughts. After that, you have to create a habituation in the anxiety, this anxiety high, after that, uh, take a middle level and slow down. And the person- but When you say face your fear, sorry for interrupting you, Aaron. Uh, it, it gets very controversial when you have a conversation of pharmaceuticals or cognitive behavioral therapy. But when you say face your fears, I will imagine it's more people that are suffering from phobia and panic disorders. And actually they're scared of like elevators or sp spiders, you know, how, how can someone with OCD face their fears if their actual fears are the things that they hate, are the things that they're causing them problems? Yes, a good question because uh, the, the way is face your fears through your, your thought, through your, through your mind. You have to close your eyes around 30 minutes and you have to face your fear. Depends on your thoughts. Imagine that the thought is uh, what if I don't love my, my partner, for example? So you have to exposure to that thought around 30 minutes, and after that, you can not do the compulsions, do the ritual. Rituals maybe could be mental or uh, motors or, or physical ritual. So this process is ERP, exposure and Response prevention. Response prevention is not to do the compulsions. And it's going to, to add in your, in your thoughts. It's going to do the uh, change in your brain, change in your, in your, your behavior, in your thoughts, in the way that you react with your thoughts. It, it's change. Uh, ERP is a, is a challenge. So it's the, the main treatment in OCD. It's a gold standard so you treatment. It, it sounds a little bit more like meditation and when we're talking about OCD, the obsession, the compulsion, like the thought and the action, you're saying we have to get to the thought. We have to get to the cognitive part. We have to disrupt the intrusive thoughts. We have to disrupt what's already being disrupted and that's, and, and that's the point. So they're not, they're not physically exposing to their fears, like in the case of someone suffering from a, a panic disorder or, or a phobia, they're mentally sort of like reanalyzing and reevaluating re and, and sort of like, um, yes, making their fears a reality. When you say face their fears, they're, yes. asked, they're asked, you know, what are you be so scared of? Yes, the, the first step is through the imagine, through, through your thoughts. After that, you can do the exposure response prevention in life. 
okay? In life, maybe in the street, or maybe in your house, or maybe in your office, or maybe in a, in a park. Why? Because it depends of the, of, the, of the thematic, of the theme, of the, of the kind of the subset of OCD. In OCD of contamination, you can, you can or you have to do a, a part of your treatment by the imaginal thought or imaginal exposure. And after that, you have to go to the street. Or you have to go out there to put it on the exposure and response prevention in life. Why? Because some triggers, the triggers are not in your home or are not in your office, maybe are in the street. Triggers are everywhere, everywhere. So after do the exposure in imaginal, you can or you have to do the exposure in life. That is the second part. Okay. So definitely is the gold standard treatment and the combination between uh, exposure and imaginal and exposure response prevention in life it's going to be the change in your brain to do the control your conclusions and control your symptoms. Until Which is why it will last, mm -hmm. sorry. No, until. Until, until your symptoms are, are get out of your life, okay? Or you improve a little bit more, there's a little bit less, less impairment. When you say you do, you do it first for 30 minutes on a typical standard first patient, how many times during the week, do you repeat ERP in session with them? Depend, depends on the several of the, of the symptoms. In low OCD or uh, level down, level not very high, you can do the exposure once a week. My, my OCD, mild to moderate. Exactly. As, as opposed, exactly. as opposed to moderate. moderate to severe. Exactly. And once there's a, a biological reason why it would be 30 minutes and why it would be many times a week, depending on the severity. You're trying to change the neurotransmitters, you're trying to change the cortical system through therapy of, exactly. of the brain. Now my question to you is, can my set, set of questions, let's, let's call it, do patients come to you already on medications with Soloff or, or, or their antidepressants? To if they do, do you tell them, stop taking them, detox, detox, you want your cognitive therapy to work? Three, do if they have too many, like the quite opposite, they come, they have a severe OCD, not mild, not moderate, severe, ranging and comorbid with the other some sort of uh, anxiety, depression, even psychotic. Okay, do you tell them to go to the psychiatrist? For do you keep in communication with psychiatrists, especially for a specific type of patient? And then, five, are there psychiatrists that are also? at least in Spain or the European Union, that are specializing OCD the way you as a psychologist are specializing OCD? Yes, when, when the patients come to, to our practice office, the, the first step is continue the medication. If the, the person suffers with um, several symptoms, they need medication. And we are, not the, we are specialized in psychologists and CBT and ERP. I'm not a psychiatrist. So the, the thing is that the, the doctor continue the medication. So if the, if the, per, if the person of the sufferer come with me to my practice office with low or with middle symptoms, my recommendation is not to take some pills or not to take medication. Depends on, 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 the, on the person of the case of the evolution of the disorder, the comorbidity with other disorders, the age of the person, the age of the patient, the kind of the subset of the OCD symptoms, uh, depends on many, many things, no? many, many topics. We recommend uh, medication in several symptoms and it's very important because we have to combine the medication with ERP because both uh, potential or potentially the, the, um, the treatment so it's the, the best way to control the symptoms. But if the person come to me, come to our practice office with no medication, my recommendation is no medication. Why? Because the, the secondary effects that has the, the medication, all, all, we all, all know the, the, some effects of the medication. You as neuroscience, you know the, all the, 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 the symptoms or the 
effects secondary in this kind of medication in antidepressant, for example. Yeah, it, it is important for the viewers to understand that even though obsessive compulsive disorder used to be in the, in the DSM-5 as a, an, an anxiety disorder, now it's its own obsessive stress-related disorder, but it is pretty much within a bigger umbrella of anxiety and stress as opposed to moody, depressive, bipolar, emotional disorders. However, the particular thing about OCD is that it gets so drastic that the rituals, the compulsions, they, they impair so, so much in people's life that medical doctors, as tend to happen, they found that a drug that used to help for something else, such as depression and bipolar and dysthymia and um, affective disorders, now can help an anxiety disorder, a stress-related disorder like it is OCD. However, there's a catch, okay? It's not the same quantities that it will work on people that have major depressive disorder, okay? We're not talking about 50 milligrams, we're talking about 200 milligrams. And the patient cannot... The, 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 exactly. The, normally, the, the medication is at least four, 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 four times up to uh, the depression, for example. If to depression right. is 50 milligrams, to OCD is four times up, two up, at least. So it's a very high... Uh, and, and it's not like the, the patient can just start taking 200 milligrams of Soloft right away on a Tuesday. They have to slowly increase and gradually, which it could be a little bit disappointed at the beginning because they're not going to see the effects that it happens. So it has, it has sort of like the worst of both worlds. You get the, the same medication that people with the depression have at a higher doses, and you still have to wait, just like in depression, you still have to wait two weeks to see some effects. Now, in the case of depression, it takes two weeks because in Soloff and these antidepressants, the neurotransmitter, the chemical that it's working in uh, the communication between the neurons, the, this chemical that actually causes the electrical communication, okay, which we call ser serotonin, it's... It's very widespread all over, the, all over the brain. There's a lot of circuits. There's a lot of um, uh, wires that, that go from cortical to, to the subcortex where dopamine exists and dopamine is working. However, in OCD, it takes longer to work because you have to get to the right doses to actually try to make a change. So it could be very, very frustrating for a patient with OCD start taking Soloff, wait for two weeks, every single day increase the doses and wondering why this is not working. My psychiatrist is horrible. The medication is horrible. But the reality is like the neurotransmitter that is supposed to work takes its time. It's all over the, the brain. And it overlaps and intersects with a lot of circuits that are related with emotion, with pain, with sexual activities, with appetite, with fatigue. So there could be the chance. Like I, I, I can't understand how impairment can it be because there, there's a chance that Soloft and these antidepressants not only don't help you right away, but they, at the beginning can feel that it, it's giving you even more problems. So what would you say to those patients that are not seeing a psychologist yet, but are seeing a psychiatrist, they're taking Soloft and it's not, and it's not working at the beginning? Yes, I, I always recommend busy the psychiatrist to to control the medication. If the person is taking Soloff and not the, the, the I'm a psychologist in specialized in CBT and ERP, no, no doctors. So my recommendation is visit the, the doctor. So in, in many cases, in many patients, Soloff uh, is not the best, the, the best choice or antidepressant is not the, the, be, the best choice. We, we work with, um, gold standard treatment with ERP. So versus medication, the ERP is around 75 or 80 percent of the results of the control of the symptoms and 20 percent is the medication. So every day we recommend do ERP, do exposure with response prevention, change your mind. This is a like go to the gym, this is a work the, the, the ERP is wonderful because it works, but it's work. You have to do the work, you have to exposure, you have to face your fears, you have to control the compulsions, you have to 
to be the consistency to do ERP every day, or at least visit your psychologist once or twice a week, at least. So it's going to progressive taking take take time to control the symptoms and to control the OCD. But it's very important, very important because ERP is the present and the future in the treatment in, in OCD. Okay. ERP is a present in the future in OCD. But just to emphasize and, and, and to summarize, sort of recap, people don't have to detox, don't have to abandon the medications with Soloft to start an ERP. They don't have to give up. They can even start working with a psychologist and then at the same time or later work with a psychiatrist and get Soloft or any other antidepressant that actually works at the, that actually changes the serotonin levels. And I think that in a way that's even the, when we talk about nature versus nurture, that's actually the best way of treating these, these disorders, doing cognitive behavioral therapy with biological therapy. Why? Because cognitive behavioral therapy, it's not just you're changing just the way people think and, and act. You're actually, in a way, targeting the neurotransmitter, you're strengthening the communication, the chemicals between these neurons and changing the, the, the way the, the cortical circuits work. It's not as fast and it's not as, as direct as a medication would. And it's definitely not like other treatments like transcranial magnetic stimulation or deep brain stimulation where you're actually inserting a, a, um, electricity or magnetism to change drastically the neurons. But you, as a psychologist, you are conscious that with this therapy, you are trying to reactivate the level, uh, the circuits in this person's brain. And what's even more interesting is that in a way, you're maximizing the potential that Solov or any other antidepressants have. You're actually making it stronger, okay? You're actually complementing Solov. If Solov wasn't working before, you're, because it, hasn't, it didn't reach the threshold, now they're reaching it with, with your therapy. Uh, antidepressant is just a, a, a little bit part of the, of the treatment because um, remember and don't forget that OCD is a um, cognitive and, and behavioral problem, okay? Because the person cannot stop the compulsions and it's, con uh, and it's behavioral. And some part in another, in another way is in the brain. But you have to do the, the change in the, with the compulsions. You have to do the, the change with your behavioral. And it's the, the everyday that is not with medication. Because medication sometimes reduce a, a, a percent of the intensity of the compulsions. But the, the, the main treatment and, and the main goal is with the ERP. It's, it's every day, like, like going to the gym, it's exactly the same because uh, remember that the, the, uh -huh. brain, the, the brain is a, it's a muscles it's like train your muscles yeah train your brain. plasticity there's there's plasticity with when you take the medication there's plasticity when the you do the therapy let me touch upon a little bit maybe i maybe i misheard you you're saying that the erp works more with the intr intrusive thoughts Wor works more with the cognitive part of ocd while the medications attack more the, the behaviors, the compulsions, the rituals. Is that, did I understood clearly? Is that what you're saying that, is that the... Oh, yes, me, me, medication can, can work with a little bit in some of the thoughts, some of the, some of the obsessions and some of the compulsions. Why ERP works? Because the, um, the, the thoughts depends on the triggers. Remember that the, the triggers maybe could be a, a bottle of water. So if I think that is it's not easy and it's contaminated and I'm going to, to take a, a really disease, for example, that is not with a thought, that is a compulsion because after that I have to take and wash my hands 40 times or 50 times. It's not my my thought that what if I take a bottle of water and contaminate before the pandemic before <laughs> wash your hand 40 50 times even before the, the pandemic I, I see so you're saying 
the, the, there's something about the triggers that we haven't that we haven't touched for we're definitely gonna keep continue talking in in the next conversations you're saying that the triggers when spanish they call a uh, desencadenante uh, these triggers okay are the reason why these rituals start so what you're trying to do with the erp among other things not only you know improve the, the well-being and reduce the rituals but reduce the uh, uh, the reactiveness that the patients have to respond to the triggers, to be yeah, to be triggered by the yeah exactly. ERP help help to you to change the behavior to not do the compulsion that is the big problem in OCD. It's not just the thought. It's not just the what if. What if I turn gay? What if I don't really love my loved one? What if if I'm a murderer or what if I kill someone? It's not just the, the thought, it's a compulsion. The way that you react with your thoughts, that is a big problem. And the change, the way that you change is with ERP. So, okay, let's switch gears a little bit. When you talk about bipolar disorder, people think that you absolutely should have a manic episode and a depressed episode. Actually, that's not true. Once you have a manic episode, you are diagnosed with bipolar disorder, okay? You don't need to actually reach the two poles to get the diagnosis because there's no other diagnosis that you can get once you get the manic episode. In the case of OCD, the people that have the intrusive thoughts that impair hours of their lives, and like you said, they're thinking about using a knife, they're thinking about, a, let's, I mean, I don't wanna overlapping with psychotic features of, or depressive or, or suicide, but that, you know, let's continue with the washing hands, the bottle example, the turning on and turning off the lights, the, completely checking t the, the time, the quantity, the temperature, uh, the, you know, if they I go to the work out, the routine. Exactly, exactly. Ritual of, of repetitive rituals. Mm. Would you, what, if, what if the person only has, just like in bipolar disorder, only has the intrusive thoughts, but they never materialize into compulsions? Would that person still get a diagnosis with OCD? Never, never, never. The person with OCD, never. Just do the compulsions, but never do the thoughts. Why? Because remember that the thoughts are egodystonic. So ego, this, this egodystonia of the of the thoughts. Mm, they don't what? bother the, the, the page. Yes, it's a, it's a big fear. So if I have a so fear, you bother, yeah. exactly. If I have a fear, I'm, I'm not going to, to do the act, okay? So that is just in OCD, okay? So a hundred percent, a hundred, a hundred percent of the, I apologize, a hundred percent of the, of the people that have OCD, they have the disruptive thoughts. They respond a hundred percent of the, of the time with compulsions. Like almost, there's almost, no, almost. Okay. The, the, there is no, uh, another way. The compulsions to the, to the people that uh, suffering OCD, the compulsion is like the quickly solution, but it's not the, the, the compulsion doesn't solve the problem. Create more problems. Why? Because create more thoughts, create more fears, create more anxiety, create more depression. It's not the, the, the compulsion is not the problem. The compulsion is the trick, and the compulsion is the big problem. And, and the problem, I mean, it would, be, it would be a dream if they were able to do the compulsion and then and then stop the problem is that it creates a visual cycle that they do the compulsion and then they they start again so in a way they get trapped within themselves you know in a way they they get sort of like frozen on time like that's like the the main the like the main drastic impairment of that and it doesn't depend whether they're by themselves or they're in a big crowd they just get stuck like, within like this being, yes it's like being in a jail but in your main your mind and your brain, it's like be in a jail. It's that. It's a, 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 um, a book of Jeffrey Swartz, Brain Lock, is a title. That is uh, what happened with uh, OCD sufferers. It's like brain lock, okay? It's like, like suffering your own mind, suffering with your own thoughts, suffering with your own head. That is a uh, part of the problem. So ERP, and, mm -hmm. yes, ERP helped you to create another way to 
respond to your thoughts, respond to the present, respond to your future, respond to the world. Okay, that is the, the, the point in ERP. And at the biological level, it makes perfect sense why the brain lock is, is happening. No, like, they have the disruptive thoughts that causes them stress. They cause the action to reduce the stress. Causing the action in a way increases a little bit of the pleasure of getting rid of. So having that pleasure, and I, pleasure probably is not the best word, but having that, having that small release of stress in, make, makes them sort of addictive into keep wanting to have the release of the stress. And at the serotonin level, when you look at the circuits, when you look at the, the patterns where you work, whether it's the limbic system, whether it's the, 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 the cortical systems, it is definitely a brain lock with biological. So I'm wondering if a person washing their hands gets in the brain lock of uh, checking the sink if there's no water, the person lives by themselves, the person lives by himself, herself, there's no one else in the apartment. They can, they can be stuck there for hours. Like we're, we're Exactly. Like I'm sure people have told you. In the... Yes, yes, exactly. And that is uh, one, of, one of the points. That's why we recommend medication versus ERP. In some cases, both in some cases, just ERP. Depends on, on each patient, depends on, on each client. Okay? So, so for the mm -hmm. Yes, Sorry. yes. Uh, yes, the, 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 the combination in some cases and in other cases, just ERP. So when you read at the stats and they say that soul of words in 50% of the people very well and on 70% of the people, so that 30% that get no benefits from soul of or any antidepressants, they will get a benefit with ERP and with your treatment because you're also doing what soul of it's supposed to do, rearranging the circuits. But maybe because it is actually the they actually putting cognitive effort and they putting a lot of working into it. it they, the response might not be immediate, but it might be, it has, it will have more durability. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. I agree with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's no, have you have any patients that, that have told you, uh, thank you so much. Psychologist, uh, I, uh, psychologist Ibarra, I don't, I don't need, you know, I'm going to make a choice. I'm going to stop taking solve because I think with ERP is enough. Many of them, many of them after the treatment and in the treatment uh, stop the medication with the psychiatrist and doesn't, don't need the, the medication. And there's never sort of like, like a dramatic, like you get a call from the psychiatrist saying, oh, I lost a patient because of you or? <laughs> some cases, some, yeah. some patients, some patients. Okay. Well, but the idea is, is for the well-being, not having people addicted to the, uh, to the medications. A final question, I just thought about it. Can you be addicted to ERP? Can you be addicted to, I mean, not, addicted is not the word. Can, can you be dependent on ERP no, for the no. rest of your life? No, no, because uh, uh, ERP is a technique, ERP is a tool. And we show how, how ERP works and the com combined with meditation, meditation, and mindfulness techniques help to be in the present, nor in the past, nor in the future, always in the present. So uh, that change, uh, putting on these, these tools in the mind of the, of the client to, to live after ERP, or in some, in some time, sometimes, in some case, ERP as part of your life, but not uh, creating a, an addict or a dependency in ERP. It's a tool. Okay, so we show that in the, in the client. Thank you so much, psychologist Alejandro, for the second week of uh, the Ibarra Exchange. We definitely need to continue on this con controversial topic and very, very important because there's a lot, there's a lot to, to discuss. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luigi. Bye-bye.